Hey there, in today's video I'm going to give my first run impressions of the New Balance Fuel Cell Super Comp Elite version 4. I'm making this video because I recently bought the Nike Alpha Fly 3. I'm a fan of the New Balance Fuel Cell or C Elite and I saw that this had been released and I decided I'd get a pair and see how they all compare. As always, this video might be long, so there are chapter markers down below, so you skip on through to the bits you might be interested in. Let's get going. The shoes have been here about a week. I've done five runs so far. I've done some tempo runs. I did a 10 minutes all out in them. I've done some sprints. I've done some hour long runs in them. And yeah, I've done some easy running in them as well. So far, I've run 32 kilometers, about 20 miles in them. And the questions I'm asking myself, are they heavy? Are they fast? Are they comfortable? And what do they compare to? In this video, I'm gonna try and answer some of those. Let's put them on the turntable and look at their specifications. New Balance say that the shoe weighs 234 grams, 8.4 ounces. This shoe is US men's 12.5, EU 47, UK 12, CM 30.5. In this size, it weighs in the left shoe, 295 grams, 10.4 ounces, and in the right shoe, 287 grams, 10.12 ounces. The shoe has a 40 millimeter stack height in men's and a 36 millimeter stack height in women's. It has a four millimeter drop. New Balance say this, the Fuel Cell Super Comp Elite V4 is a race day shoe designed for the moments when seconds really do count. The propulsive feeling of Fuel Cell is combined with a thinner carbon plate, offering superior energy return in a lightweight package. Energy Arc pairs sport-specific carbon fiber plate geometry with strategic midsole voids, designed to increase stored energy to deliver a higher amount of total energy returned. Rocker profile for smooth, natural feeling transition from heel to toe. Let's review the shoe and see if what New Balance says is true. The upper is fairly straightforward in some senses. It's got a fairly traditional heel, bit of structure in there. Nothing particularly complicated about the upper. I like the tongue. The tongue is a very simple material. It's not like it's a, a, a texture and it's padded. It's just a simple thin piece of material. Feels a bit like Alcantara or fake suede. They have a little triangle theme going on in, in some of the pretty much uh, probably reference to the original New Balance fuel cell elites. And they're light, there's a lightweight upper and there's reasonable ventilation. I'll stick the light in and we'll have a look. Sticking the light into the shoe, you can kind of see the structure of it as I move, move around. You can see that there's small little holes in it. They're not sort of larger holes like you would get in the Atomit on the Alpha Fly 3. But yeah, I was out running in various windy conditions and the ventilation is, is fine. The toe box is fine for me, plenty of wriggle room. I don't really like the laces. They're very thin. They pull through the eyelets really well. That's the nice part. I found they came undone a bit. They're sort of, uh, they're not grippy like they have on the Alpha Fly or my North Face Vectives. And then I had a tendency to over tighten them, to pull them like a, like a knot so they wouldn't become undone. And then they were hard to uh, undo. So not my favorite laces. That's probably my only criticism of the upper. The midsole has foam, lots of foam, nitrogen compound fuel cell foam. There's really lots of it. That's the most noticeable thing about the shoe is how much foam there is, certainly compared to the original. In terms of the outsole, I like the outsole on this shoe. Now, I loved the outsole on this shoe. Never seen anything like it on another shoe, just these little triangles stuck on. I had great grip. It took me a long time because I was wearing these only in, in the wet. That was my plan with them because I liked the grip so much. These. There's actually quite good grip and traction in these. I've, I noticed it immediately. It's not compared to a non-carbon plate shoe, but for a carbon plate shoe, the grip and traction on these are pretty good. I've done a lot of running in the wet in them. Cleaned them up for this uh, particular video. All that good foam stuff leads to weight. 287 grams or 10.12 ounces in this UK size 12. They're at the heavy end of my carbon plate shoes. They're heavier than the Alpha Fly 3 and just a little bit heavier than the Alpha Fly 1s. I went down a rabbit hole on the stack height and drop of these shoes. They're not quoted on the New Balance site in Europe that I was looking at. I emailed New Balance to ask them for sure. I got no response. Two days later, I got a response saying, how did they do? I said, well, not very well. You didn't send me any details. And I haven't heard back from them. But I've seen it at 40 millimeters and I've also in men's and 36 millimeters in women's. Now that seems about right. It seems 40 up here. And I can tell there's a huge amount of foam in there. So I managed to find on the, the US site, there's a four millimeter drop in men's and women's. But one of the online things I saw said that it was a 36 millimeter stack height in women's. I think that's unlikely. 
the World Athletics, they measure all the shoes at an EU 42, which is a quite a small sized shoe and um, for men and women in unisex. So I think these are 40 mil, four mil drop, and it might, it will vary depending on the size, but it would be nice if New Balance just let everybody know to begin with. I really like the design of the Fuel Cell Elite, the original one. I really like this swooshing B. It's really a shoe I liked the look of the sort of curves. They've gone completely away from that. And they've gone back to their big chunky N, but actually I quite like the look of the shoe. I like the faceted base and uh, yeah, the big N is kind of stuck on as a sort of uh, thin layer of, of adhesive, but yeah, it's a shoe I've grown to like more the look of. At the moment, it's only available in this one colorway in men's and women's. It's white, bleached lime glow, and hot mango, a sort of green, white, and orange theme. So yeah, it's uh, didn't like it initially, but it's really grown on me the longer I've had it. The shoe itself doesn't have any great sustainability credentials, but at least the box it came in is pretty small. So. Marks to New Balance for that. The shoe is super easy to get on, wide aperture. As soon as you put it on, you notice two things. One is the high stack. It really is high off the ground and also the rocker. You certainly notice those, and particularly in relation to the original Fuel Cell Elite. I really enjoyed the running feel in the shoe. I, I love the rocker of the shoe. I really like that as a, as a, in, a in a running shoe. It's it's a very comfortable shoe. I mean, there's lots of foam. I mean, you can you can notice it. You really notice it at the stack height at the forefoot because it's going to be 36 millimeters, probably more in my size because at a UK 12, mines are all, are always scaled up. But I noticed the firmness in the rear. I noticed the plate in the rear. But yeah, it's a it's a comfortable shoe to run in. In terms of grip and traction, it's better than your usual marathon shoe. This is quite grippy. I don't know if the, there's a sort of cross crossing of the of, of the pattern, whether that helps, but they are more tacky than most shoes. And again, it's a high stack shoe, particularly it's also high in the forefoot. So pretty much fine in the dry and on the straight sections. But yeah, for a marathon carbon plate shoe, better grip and traction than most. The shoe costs 280 euro, $249.99. 260 pounds or 360 Australian dollars. And at that, it's priced midway between Nike's Vaporfly 3 and their Alphafly 3. The buying experience was really simple. There were lots on sale. They announced when they were going on sale. I jumped on immediately. But there seemed to have been lots on sale in Europe. I think they sold out in various sizes in the United States, in men's and women's. But yeah, there'll be lots of these around. In terms of use case, marathon running for me, they're relatively heavy, so might suit the longer distances where the cushioning is required. And I'll also do a lot of training in them. It's a shoe. Yeah, I really like running in the shoe, so I'll be using it for all sorts of stuff. It's really interesting to compare the Orsi Elite to the Supercomp Elite version 4. This is a totally different shoe, much, much more foam, a totally different design. It is interesting to see how New Balance have changed since they've gone on. I guess it's really super stack, super foam shoes. There is a companion training shoe that's going to be released, a Fuel Cell Rebel version four, which this is say in the United States, 250 bucks, and the Fuel Cell Rebel version four is gonna be 140 bucks. So you could pair the two pretty nicely. The Fuel Cell Rebel version four has a six millimeter drop. I'll do a Photoshop comparison where you can kind of see some lines if you can squint on your little iPhone. But uh, yeah, the, the drop is different, six mil in one and uh, four mil in the other. I'm going to do some performance testing in another video in detail against the Alpha Fly 3, but I was looking at the US trials. Emily Sisson was New Balance's top athlete. She came in the she came second in the women's. There was nobody in the top tens in men's. But interestingly, she wasn't wearing the uh, Super Comp Fuel Cell, a Fuel Cell Super Comp Elite version 4. She was wearing a Super Comp racer, which is more a 5k to half marathon kind of shoe. But there are athletes, I've seen it in the in the last year's London Marathon, someone ran it into Kumi Sen 9s. So yeah, there are people who can get by who have such a clean strike that they probably don't need the additional cushioning. I went out, I found these, uh, yeah, I'm trying to, I'll, I'll do a detailed performance test, but I did one of my old tricks, which is run against the radar gun. The fastest I've ever got is 26 kilometers in the Alpha Fly 1s. I think after that I didn't do it but the other day I decided to do it again and yeah I got to 26 kilometers an hour in these very briefly but yeah they're capable of putting out the pace and I'm really looking forward to a detailed test versus the Alpha Fly 3.
Should you buy the New Balance Fuel Cell Supercomp Elite version 4? Well, at least it's available, unlike the Nike Alpha Fly 3, where the other day I got a notification that they'd gone on sale in Tokyo and then they'd gone off sale because there was none left. So at least this is available in Europe in all sizes, in the States in most sizes, and certainly in the wider width, I think they are. And I'm not sure, they did seem to be sold out in Australia, but it's a shoe I really like. I found it really comfortable to run in. I like putting it on. I, I really do like this shoe and in limited testing, it seems to be pretty fast. So I'm gonna do more testing this, but this should certainly be on your short list. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did, it would be great if you'd hit the like button. As always, there'll be lots of stuff in the description below and I'll happily answer any questions you put into the comments. There'll be a big blue subscribe button popping up there and some other videos there. Thanks for watching. Until the next video, just keep running along.